I went on stage the first time with my papa, Dr. Ralph, when I was two years old. And to beat it all, it was at the Grand Ole Opry. I'll never forget it. And of course, at that time, I, I can still remember vivid things about that night because it was, because it was, Well, I'm Nathan Stanley. I'm a recording artist, and uh, my grandfather was the late, great Dr. Ralph Stanley. Started out singing with him when I was, uh, well, going on stage with him when I was two years old, and 30 now, and uh, traveled with him, and was uh, his last lead singer for the Clinch Mountain Boys. And during that time, I started my own solo career, and uh, still doing it, trying to. Oh, I'm from the in the mountains where I live to be, uh, Dickinson County, Virginia. I live on a little uh, ridge called Sandy Ridge uh, between Clintwood and Coburn, Virginia. But uh, Clintwood is my hometown, Dickinson County, uh, where we're at right now, right here in the beautiful Ralph Stanley Museum. My mom was, was only 20 when she, when she had me and, and she wasn't married, you know, it was one of those things. And, and I came home from the hospital and I came, and I'm still sleeping in the same bedroom right now to this day that I, I came home and slept in. When I was two, two or three, mom decided to get married to, to her, her love and, and was moving out. Papa cried and begged my mother, please leave him here. That boy had brought new life into me because I would follow him everywhere he went. I, I was right beside him, you know. If he was at the barn, I was with him. If he was in the back, I was with him, you know. We were buddies and I learned so much from him, but he, he and my mama raised me. And uh, now that, uh, you know, he, we lost Papa in 2016, I'm still taking care of my mama. She's 83, and uh, I'm still there for her and have took over the old home place up there. And been my home 30 years, you know, so it might as well be my home for another 30. So uh, just still honoring him. And uh, But like I say, came straight home from the hospital to the same bedroom I'm in right now. He raised me. and. On, this, on, the, on the shows and on the dates we would go, but when we come home, it was farm life. For a long time, he loved to farm. We'd be, and he had, he had two properties that he had farms on, and we were going from one to the other. We'd go to a feed store, or we'd go to a grocery store and go to the bank, just normal day stuff, you know? You still doing some farming? No, no, I don't farm too much. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna lie. Now I didn't take that from him, but I love it. I love being out there on a the farm and just smelling it, you know. And, and of course, we live up there. We have horses and things. I told him one time, uh, he owns a property that had a pond on it. I said, Papa, I want some catfish. I want you to make it for me. He said, Well, you catch them and I'll fly them and fix them for you. So Ralph, too, and I, I was young. We went down there and we caught a few. And buddy, he he played him and fixed him. He sure did. He sure he, he was a good cook. People don't know this, but he cooked more than them all did. He was a great cook, great cook. Cause he helped his mama. Cause you know, Papa's mama was left by by their daddy uh, when when they were young, and so pretty much all Lucy had was Papa and Carter. And Papa was a mama's boy, and he he really helped take care of his mama because he, you know, that's, that's all that, that she had. I'm a, I'm an animal lover. I love dogs and all that stuff, you know, so I'm one of those fur baby, you know, that's, that's, that's my children, you know, so, um, but I, I do have an interest like he did in animals, but in, in a little different way because I'm more of a wanting to create like no kill shelters and things like that. And he was more in the, the farm side of it, you know, uh, uh, coon dogs or, you know, squirrels or rabbit dogs, you know, I'm just more of a, you know, I, I love all of them, want to just hug all of them, you know, and just protect them, you know, so, but, but I, I get it from him too. I get a lot from Papa, you know, being around him, you know, uh, until he passed away, you know, we were, we were together on the road, off the road. I seen the good and the bad whenever his health declined. And, you know, it, it, it really will break a man to see that somebody has been your rock and who you've always depended on and relied on when they become, when he got sick, you know, it, it, it really will, will, will break you. You know, seeing that that guy that was so strong now, you're his rock and he depends on you for everything, you know, but, but I, I was there for him and I, I did everything I could for him. 
and I'll never uh, regret it. Well, right now we're at the Ralph Stanley Museum and it's located, as I said, in Clintwood, Virginia here. And um, this, uh, the state of Virginia came in around 2004, purchased this old beautiful building downtown Clintwood here and changed it and turned it into the Ralph Stanley Museum and Traditional Mountain Music Center. And it honors my papa's legacy. It honors the Stanley Brothers legacy. Uh, and it also goes back even further to it honors their legacy from where they learned from, like my papa's mother, and of course the Appalachian Mountains here, and uh, just the the music and the performers, you know, that has come from this area for generations, you know. So it's a great place to come and uh, experience. If you want to know more about Dr. Ralph Stanley, the Stanley Brothers, I'm even in here, and uh, and so many others, you know. So it's, it's a great place. I encourage everybody to come visit here. Papa is one of the very few artists in this style of music who whose music has crossed over boundaries. He he really was stuck on calling his music old time mountain country music. He did not like the term bluegrass. He liked a lot of the music, but he said, not for my music. He said, I'm, he said, I'm more va way back. And as you can see, we're here in the mountains. This is where it come from. And, you know, he started out here in uh, groups like the Mainers Mountaineers and, and folks like that who were even before Monroe these stringed instruments, you know, and listen to the radio and things and the Grand Ole Opry and, and uh, other banjo pickers and stuff, you know. So, and then this area, as you know, uh, Dickinson County and all, all of Southwest Virginia, East Tennessee, it, it's full rich of musical history. The Carter family coming from Hilton, Virginia, just a couple mountains over. And Stanley Rattles come from here in Dixon County and, uh, you know, so many others that's uh, from uh, around this part. And so Papaw's music was inspired from these mountains, inspired. Carter Stanley wrote songs that they lived, and that's what set them apart. Because, you know, there's some artists that sound the same, especially in today's time. But when you put on a Ralph Stanley record or you put on a Stanley Brother record or even a Bill Monroe record or a George Jones, you know who the singer is. You ain't got to guess. They had their own their own style. They called the Stanley style. Now, his banjo pickings, he was he was known as, as the Stanley style of banjo picking. Most banjo players will use what they call a flathead, which honestly makes the banjo to me sound more duller. It, it's more of a, but now Papa liked using, they call a flat, uh, raised head, which brought that big, bright, loud, busting, you know, sound for the banjo. Like if you go back and listen to Little Maggie or Pretty Polly, you hear that, that driving banjo. And, and it's uh, very few people in the business used a uh, raised head, but Papa stood apart by that. But I think to me personally, his voice, is what took him around the world. He was a legend and an icon before Old Brother Where Art Thou hit in 2000. But when they took him, put him in, in the movie and on the soundtrack, that put him in homes and theaters around the world that had never even witnessed mountain music. And they heard his voice. And it was like nobody you will ever hear on radio. You know, there's artists like that. Ralph Stanley was one of them. And they was, you know, of course, Man of Constant Sorrow, which is Soggy Bottom Boys. They copied the old Stanley Brothers version of that song. And then in uh, 1970, Papa did it a little bit more older style. And there wasn't no repeating in the song. It was just singing it, which I like better. But they had that song in there. And then they had, of course, Oh Death. And then Angel Band was by the Stanley Brothers that closed out the film if, if you watch the credits. So it was a blessing to, to Papa. And they did a Down from the Mountain tour, which featured a lot of the, the artists off the soundtrack. And the first leg was 40 some nights, second leg 40 some nights, a couple months in between. I was on one of them and I was nine years old and celebrated my 10th birthday in Charleston, West Virginia at the Civic Center over there. But uh, Patty Loveless was on this tour, uh, Ricky Skaggs, Del McCurry Band, Emily Harris, a lot of folks that were in the soundtrack as I said, and not in the soundtrack. But Papa always closed the show. He always was the headliner. Allison Krauss was on there, and Papa would come out and do five or six songs. He and Patty Loveless would do Pretty Polly. And then at the very end, 
the entire cast would come out and they'd all join hands behind Papa. And Papa would lead him in angel band in amazing grace. And the, the crowd would be standing up and they'd be singing along with you. Now, when you're out in Hollywood, California at the Hollywood Bowl, and you got a mountain music legend, got Hollywood standing on their feet crying and people shouting and things, that it's moving them somewhere. And that's what his, that's what his voice could do. That's what his music did, you know because he really, he believed in what he sung. If he sung about going to heaven, if he sung about angel band, he, he, he believed in that and um, as well as I do. In Papillon's career, probably his most famous songs, well, thanks to, to his, the fans, but the movie Over the Rock Down the Soundtrack, still to this day is considered to be the top selling country soundtrack of all time. And so, Oh Death, of course, popularity, he won no Grammy for it, for Best Male Country Vocalist in 2002. He uh, beat out Johnny Cash, Tim McGraw, Willie Nelson, and for Old Death. And George Jones told me, he said, I was sitting at home. And when they come across the screen that Ralph won that, his eyes jumped up out of my chair and was just all to pieces happy because he won it. Because here come little old mountain music legend. He, wasn't, he, he was little in stature, but he wasn't little in fame and, and respect. And there he was and, and got a standing ovation and he deserved it. He deserved it. You know, 60 plus years in the business. He's got fans in rock music, country music. Country music was better to Papa than bluegrass music. They were always, there's a click in everything. But Papa didn't need the countryside. These country artists, they treated him as if he were Elvis because they grew up listening to him. You know, Bob Dylan, the Kid Rock to Ozzy Osbourne, Tom Petty has been, we were out in California and I was just a little boy playing those spoons that's hung up in the room right there next door to us. Papa kicked into little Maggie. Tom Petty stood, stood up out of the crowd and started singing right along with him. Big old fan, you know. So his music is timeless um, and it's it will live on for, for generations to come because of what what it was and what he was. He was a fine man. People come from all over the world to visit this museum here. And, you know, it's it's kind of Dixon County's pride, you know, because Papa could have went anywhere and lived. Nashville. He was encouraged to go to Nashville and live because, you know, if you're down there in it, you can get more, you, well, you can get a lot of things done quicker, let's say. He didn't want to leave home. It's Alan Maggard and Maggard Sound Studio. Now, Maggard Sound Studios in Big Stone Gap, Virginia, started by Charlie Maggard. That's Alan's daddy. And buddy, Papa, 80% of Papa's material was cut at that, at, at that studio. All 10 of my records have been cut at Maggard Sound Studios. Alan know, there's just something about Alan knew what Papa wanted. He knows what I want, and you won't find no better, no better engineer, no better studio than, than Alan Magger. They, I had people try to get me, and still do, oh, come cut it in Nashville. I'm like, why? Just so I can spend more money? Alan Magger can do it what you want. And not only us record there, but the Singing Cooks, legendary gospel group, uh, Blue Highway, another uh, famed bluegrass group, uh, so many people have come to Maggard Sound Studios in Big Stone Gap. Alabama's Randy Owen, they were doing their first gospel CD. And we were featured on that. They wanted to do out on the man Thomas. And so Randy Owen, the lead singer of Alabama, he come up to Big Stone Gap, Virginia. He was seen at the Dairy Queen that morning and he come to the studio and we got pictures and he was just in awe of being around Papa. But he come to Maggard Sound. He wanted to come there. It was cut there. So a lot of special things has, you know, Papa's uh, recorded records at this one Grammy Awards. Uh, my uh, CD, uh, uh, Every Mile, won a Dove Award. It was cut there. So I don't have any plans to go anywhere else. Papa was the type that he'd go out and he'd sing in front of 10,000 people and get a standing ovation. And then he'd be home on a Sunday or Monday and he'd be out there in a the cattle field to make sure the hay was fine and, and, and walk in the fields and in his bibbed overalls, you know. 
And uh, that's what that's what he was. He he was a mountain boy. That's what I am. I, I I'm a little. I dress up like a Liberace sometimes. They always look wild for my stage shows. But it's part of it's part of what I am and, and what I'm building for my own legacy. You know, you gotta you gotta stand out. Like I said, Papa always told me, be your own. I mean, he he instilled this in me from my child. Be your own man. Don't be a copycat. You like this singer, you like this one, you take that, but you add to it. And you and you be Nathan. And by the grace of the good Lord above, that's what we're aiming and trying to do, you know, and, and just keep plugging along. But if it weren't for Papa, you know, it you know, I, I definitely probably would not have been in the music business, nor Ralph too. You know, he he really, you know, opened the door for us, you know. And now you can't make it in the music business just, just by because your son by his grandson or son. That helps a lot. But you got to prove yourself too. You got to show, okay, now that now that, that that's established, what can you do? And that's what Ralph and I both are doing, but in different in different ways. I believe that the singers and the artists like myself are from these mountains, like my papa. Now there'll there'll never be another singer like Papa. He had a voice that was uh, they used to call him the 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 boy with the hundred year old voice when he was young because he sounded so much older than what he was. Uh, but there, you can tell, even though it might not be Ralph Stanley, but you know, nobody like, like myself, I'm not trying to be Ralph Stanley because you can't. I'm being Nathan Stanley and doing my own, my own style, but the mountain music right here and the, and the singers, you can tell, you can pick up on whether it's a phrase they sing in a song or even the sound if where they're from and if they're really mountain uh, rooted, you know. Papa always said it was just born and bred in you in these mountains. It was just a different type of people who experienced, you know, a lot of time it was just hard life around here. You know, they wasn't nothing spectacular around here at all. It was hardworking folks that um, picked up a banjo like his mother, Lucy, and, and that's where he learned how to play claw hammer style and took it all around the world. You know, I, I don't know. I just think that I, God just had a special gift in these mountains, and He got, He gave it to these singers because it's, you know, it it goes way back, and it's like I say, you can tell. But living in the mountains, you know, versus anywhere else, it it gives you so much inspiration because when you go out and you actually just want to be alone and just be with your surroundings, you you can get a lot of inspiration from from your surroundings here and and from God. Bristol, it's a great spot. For, for music, it is the birthplace of country music. But I don't want people to forget that entertainment, it, it, it don't stop at Bristol. Come on down here to Dixon County and see us. Right down the street from the Ralph Stanley Museum here is the Jetty Baker Center. And it's a wonderful state-of-the-art facility. Holds about 350 people. And we have folks that come to every one of our shows from as I told you before, many different states to come to, to um, we're hosting the Nathan Stanley Celebrity Concert Series there this year. And um, we uh, have artists come in throughout the year and perform. We just had Gene Watson, country music legend. We got T. Graham Brown coming up and many others. And then of course in December, I close the, uh, the series out with me and a few special guests. We do two Christmas shows. And so it's a wonderful thing I can, Stay home a lot if I want to, and and bring good music to uh, to my people here in Jackson County. We have a lot of irons in the fire, as you know. We um, we host the, the Nathan Stanley Radio Show that is on ninety three point five WAXM, based out of Norton, Virginia. It's a um, fifty thousand watt country station, reaches into about um, five portions of five different states, and we have a lot of listeners and people from all over the world tune in because they can stream it at waxm.com. We do that every Monday night. And of course, I just told you the, the celebrity concert series we host. I still travel and do tour dates and um, we're getting ready to release my 10th solo record, which is actually a live CD that we did right down here at the J.D. Baker Center. We, we come in rec and recorded it with the crowd and everybody. And that's going to have 12 live tracks. And it's going to have three bonus tracks, that brand new songs that we went into the studio and did. Um, I mainly sing, but I'll play rhythm guitar. But I started out, as I said, I went on stage the first time with my papa, Dr. Ralph, when I was two years old. And to beat it all, it was at the Grand Ole Opry. I'll never forget it. And of course, at that time, I, I can still remember vivid things about 
that night because it was because it was seeing people that uh, you know I was a young boy, just a baby, listening to George Jones, people like that, wanting to hear him, you know. And I was a music buff at two, three years old. I didn't know how important the Opry was at the time. I was just on a stage with Papa, but I knew it was some kind of big deal, you know. And then years and years later continued playing with Papa there and then got a lot of respect for the Grand Ole Opry because it is one of the greatest things that ever happened to country music and I uh, was honored to get to play there with Papa for uh, so many years. Every time Papa played it from around about 94 till 2016, I was always on there with him. Yeah. And we're working on uh, getting on there as, as a solo artist now to kind of feature our music and honor Papa too, you know, because I think the Opry needs another Stanley on there just to have it around. The Clinch Mountain Boys was, of course, started by my papa and his older brother, Carter Stanley, um, the Stanley Brothers and the Clinch Mountain Boys, which they formed. They were the second, well, pretty much the first group after Bill Monroe uh, came on the scene and was pretty much driving hardcore bluegrass at the time. The Stanley Brothers came in 46. They or the, the first group to follow Bill Monroe. And then you had Flat and Scruggs that were at the time were playing with Monroe, but they didn't form Flat and Scruggs until around 1948. But this, the Clinch Mountains is um, not too far from here. It's over, it's over toward through Dungan in Virginia in that way and uh, beautiful. And so they just named it that and it, it stuck. And after Carter passed away in 1966, Papa continued on as uh, Ralph Stanley and the Clinch Mountain Boys until he became a doctor, uh, honorary doctor in, uh, in music twice. My uncle, Ralph too, he has uh, took on the Clinch Mountain Boys, makes sense. Ralph Stanley the second and the Clinch Mountain Boys and they do a fine job. They play a lot of uh, bluegrass fest around the country theaters and uh, still bring the old time mountain style of, of, of Stanley style, what they call it until all they still love it. Ralph and I do a few things together. You know, right now, um, I do mostly traditional country music, and I have for a long time. And so it's, it's a little bit different music, but still it's that traditional sound of George Jones and people like that. And uh, th there's in the works that Ralph and I are going to do a, a duet record together and, and go back and do a lot of the old Stanley Brothers songs, because we actually did a, a show here at the Jetty Baker Center in December of last year. and. We came together and we did a few of those songs together and I did Papa's part and he sung Carter's part and it turned out pretty good. I enjoy working with Ralph. We're kind of doing our own thing. Ralph is still continuing that old, like I said, the old Stanley style bluegrass music, which ain't really bluegrass. Papa never called his music bluegrass. He said it's old time mountain country music, what they call bluegrass music. And so Ralph is still continuing that as well as doing his own songs too but doing it that style and doing a fine job. Ralph was the uh, lead singer for the Clinch Mountain Boys before I stepped in. And then when, when Ralph fully went solo, I was 15. And then I took over uh, singing lead uh, for Papa. My Papa's mother, Lucy, uh, when, when Papa was just, he wasn't very old, uh, she gave him a choice, uh, either a banjo or a hog. Both of them were, uh, I believe it was $5. Uh, the, the hog or the banjo, right? Because honey, either a, either some bacon or some ban or a banjo. And I'm so I like bacon, but praise God he picked the banjo. But pa a lot of folks don't know this, but Papa also had a big interest in uh, like animals and agriculture. He took agriculture in school, and he he floated the idea that he if he ever wasn't in music, he may have become a veterinarian because he loves working with stuff like that. And so, but now Lucy, my great grandmother, she taught him how to play the claw hammer. And if you uh, follow his music and any of the folks who watches this, you know, uh, Shout Little Luli, uh, folks, the songs like that, you know, and Rocky Island, those are influenced from his mama right here in Dixon County. Cause he was born actually, uh, Big Spraddle actually was probably 15 minutes from here, nestled way back under a mountain in a little, little home and then they eventually moved up the ridge a little bit and then when uh, uh, Carter passed away they were living in Florida at the time. They did a TV show down in, uh, in Florida for Jim Walter Holmes and they would travel back and forth but uh, they were home when Carter passed away 1966. Artists like Carter and, and, and even myself, if, if you can't write it you find a good songwriter. 
and they can write your heart. And a lot of our music comes and is inspired by heartache, by tragic events, by things that it's real, it's real life stuff that people who listen to it can connect with and um, be familiar with in, in, in some kind of way. So it hits them somewhere because we ain't just sat here singing a song. We're singing a song how we feel it and um, whether it's good or bad, that's how it comes out. Your best days behind you or in front of you? No, they're always in front of me. You got to think that. Now, I'm not going to say that I didn't have some wonderful days. And by my days that I've lived up to this far, I've learned so much in a short time. I grew up quick. I grew up fast. I had to. I was on the road, and most of the men that were in the bus traveling was 25 and above, 30, 40 years old, and some of them 60, like Papa, 50, 60, 70 years old. So I was raised by the old type generation stuff. And I cherish that because I grew up really quick. You know, 15 years old, I was paying my own bills, doing my own stuff. You know, I wasn't relying on Papa. Of course, I worked for Papa, got a paycheck from him, but when I was 15, I really started just knowing that I had to create my own way, you know, and start getting my own records out. So I used to play the mandolin a little bit because I kind of went from the spoons to the mandolin. And I did that for a long time. And uh, my, my actual first CD that ever was recorded, was it's called Sandy Ridge, and that's the ridge I live on. And it's all, there's some singing on there, and I just had started singing about three weeks prior to this record. I was 12. And, uh, but now I did all the mandolin work on it. And the Clinch Mountain Boys, we, we actually um, were playing uh, Bill Monroe's festival that they still host in Bean Blossom, Indiana. And we got home on a Sunday and uh, James Shelton, longtime guitarist for Papa, a role manager for about 18 years. He um, could make a guitar talk, had that old cross picking style. And uh, James was from East Tennessee over near Churchill and stuff, he passed away cancer before Papa did. But I remember me and James getting in his Jeep, Cherokee Jeep, and the rest of the boys following him because Papa would always park the bus at, the, at that time in Coburn, Virginia, behind the food city or behind the, the Pizza Hut at one time. Ricky Skaggs caught that bus many a time right there behind Pizza Hut, you know, and that bus was parked there. And uh, he'll tell you, but we, we come home and we left straight from the bus, not much, you know, bunks and stuff on the bus, you can sleep pretty good. But no shower, just went on to the studio and we cut the record in seven hours. And, and so we still, it was a long time ago. The Appalachian people are real. They are real to the core. They'll, they'll, if something ain't right in their mind, they'll tell you that it ain't right in their mind, but they mean it with love. They mean it with love. They're just, it's just, you know, being, going to New York City and going to uh, California, where are you from? You go in a restaurant, you know, and because and, we're so country, you know, and back, I said, honey, we, you never heard it from where we're from, you know, so, but just the people here, they're real. They're not fake. They won't, they won't sugarcoat nothing and they won't, if they don't like it, they don't, they'll tell you, but if they do, they'll let you know too. They're wonderful people. They're, they're, uh, Appalachian people, mountain people is really heart and soul of this nation because it's what you had really before everything, all these uh, big cities and stuff were built. You had these little mountain towns, hardworking American people that wanted just to provide for their family, you know, didn't want anything special, just enough to get by and live comfortable. Good, humble people. A lot of people come from, from this area, East Tennessee, Kentucky. It's amazing, you know, if, if, if you took all of the artists that came from East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, and Eastern Kentucky, if you took all of those out, you would have a hole in country music the size you could drive a truck through. That's how big, you know, you've got Eastern Kentucky's ate up with it. Southwest Virginia's ate up with it, with the Stanleys and the Carter family. And of course you had Doc Boggs and, you know, in the Wise County over there, and you had just many other people, Mike Seeger from, you know, he was resided a lot in Big Stone and stuff. Legends that really didn't get the limelight like they should, but they're legends, man, and that's what this is about. Just a guy on a banjo, that's all you need. I think Papa approved that. I love that. <laughs> Thank God he didn't get the hog, though. <laughs> but I do like bacon, I tell you. My main goal, and, and you know, really, is just to 
keep putting out try what I think is good quality music songs like like my papa that he believed in uh, and just hopefully that, that that my music can in in some way touch somebody whether it be a gospel song whether it helps them um, find Christ and I've had that happen before because you know a, a, a three minute song sometimes can do more for a person than two hours of preaching and I just my, my, my main thing is that I, I love everybody and um, I'm just me. I'm just me. I, I, you know, if if I become a legend one day and become a, a, a whatever it might be, I'm, I'll be appreciative of that. But I'll never forget uh, where, where where I've come from and, and what and who I am because I'm always grounded and rooted in my faith. And these mountains, they'll humble you.